This is Rob Jackson from Fandroid.com, and this is our review of the Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1 2014 edition. <laughs> This year's Note 10.1 is much more solid and well-built than in years past. It's thinner, it's lighter, has smaller bezels, and adding to that premium feel this year is a new faux leather back with stitching that replaces the old plastic. And this is plastic too, but gives it more of a classic portfolio look. Opinions will vary, I happen to think it looks great. Doubling the pixel density from last year, the Note 10.1 now has a super clear LCD screen with 2560 by 1600 pixel resolution. Big improvement and it looks amazing. On the front of the tablet we've got a dedicated home button flanked by a menu button on the left and a back button on the right. And a light sensor and 2 megapixel camera are on the left of the Samsung logo. On the top you'll find the power button, volume rocker, IR transmitter, and in the top right is where you'll find the dock for the S Pen stylus. The stylus seemed a bit fragile, but worked fine for me, and they also include some extra tips for the stylus in the box. Below the stylus dock is a slot for a micro SD card, holds up to 64 gigabytes, and of course either 16 gigabyte or 32 gigabytes are built in depending on the model you get. On the bottom of the tablet, you've got the micro USB 2.0 port, on the left, you've got the speaker grill and the 3.5mm headset jack, and then there's another speaker on the opposite side. The Note 10.1 is packed with a 1.9GHz quad-core processor, 3GB of RAM, and an 8220mAh battery. Taking pictures with your tablet is ridiculous and should be outlawed, but if you've got thick skin, there's a mediocre 8 megapixel camera with LED flash. The experience is built around multitasking with the S Pen and a new 5-option Air Command menu. This first option is called Action Menu. And it lets you write down a name, a phone number, an email address, a doodle, whatever, save it for later use, and then in some cases you can take action on it. So press the button and then save it directly into my address book. Scrapbooker is a second option, and it lets you save tidbits from around the web or from maps or apps, circle them, and then save them for later use. And you can also attach a memo or a little note to them. Screenwriter is the third option, and this will take a screenshot of absolutely anything. And then you write on the screen and either share or save your newly doodled image. We're working on the responsive theme for Fandroid.com, and here I am marking up our homepage, letting our developer know what's wrong, where the bugs are, and what to do. And now I can go ahead and directly share this with her. The fourth option is S Finder, and it basically allows you to search across your entire device, your pictures, your memos, your scrapbook, and the web. So it's an all-in-one kind of search. Lastly, we've got Pen Window, which allows you to open up one of a handful of apps on top of any screen. So it overlays everything. You can open up a number of them at a time. You can move them around, resize them. Uh, it's a pretty cool idea. I found it kind of laggy and buggy. Uh, it's a, much better than on the Note 3, but still has its problems. Much better than Pen Window, in my opinion, is Multi Window, where you can open up a number of apps in the main screen and then drop another one in, and you've got this dual monitored split pane kind of action going on, and both still offer pretty huge full experiences. You can see here I am using Maps and browsing the web at the same time, you can do a lot of different combinations. In my opinion, if you're already multitasking and you want a third instance, that's when you use Pen Window. Alright, now here's where the drama starts. With a quad-core processor, 3 gigabytes of RAM, your device really shouldn't have any lag. It's powerful. But clearly, if you rewatch the first four minutes of this video, you'll see some lagging and some performance issues. And when using the tablet day in and day out, it can become a noticeable irritation. Here we are in my magazine, and this is where the lagging is the most noticeable. So I did a little test, and I experienced some multitask lag and S Pen lag, but when swiping through the home screens, it went really fast. Now pop into my magazine and try the same thing. Yeah, that's not gonna work. That's pretty bad. The Galaxy Note 3 actually had this same exact issue. If you go really quickly through the home screens, beautiful. That's really lightning fast. Try the same thing on my magazine and what the, yeah, that's, no. So this is made by Flipboard and the problem is probably more to do with Flipboard than it is to do with Samsung and their software and hardware. And I did experience some lag when using the Note 10.1 and multitasking here and there. 
But I just want to illustrate that I've had a slightly different experience than others. Some folks have also complained that one or both devices have taken two full minutes to open the gallery app or some ridiculous problem. I didn't have this problem with either device, so just wanted to show you guys video evidence of that. Uh, both the Note 3 and the Note 10.1 opened up my galleries quickly, allowed me to browse through them with ease, and really I had no problem there. And we're just skimming the surface with what we've covered in this video. Check out our full review at fandroid.com, there's a lot more information there. And you can see Samsung has built a powerful device with the hardware, powerful device with the software, and they've got a lot more custom apps built just for the Note experience with the S Pen, and they're more coming from Samsung and third parties all the time. So it's going to take you a while to learn the device. Take the time to learn it. Use Fandroid and AndroidForums.com as a resource, and hopefully we'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching.